All right. I'm wasting time. Suddenly the roar, now suddenly the undertow And the keys to your apartment in a charm remains And the kingdom of your heart, then when you wrote my name Just need someone to walk you home Needed someone to walk you Mm-hmm. 
miles There were angels in the canyons But the fire moved too fast For a second we were infinite But our mist took the goal Suddenly the roar Now suddenly the undertow And the keys to your Hey man, it's been a while. I haven't talked to you since like April, I think. You never told me what you thought about uh, the theory I made. The theory video about your weird Garfield videos. Um, I know I didn't figure it all out. Maybe you're upset about that. I don't know. It's kind of been keeping me up at night, actually. It's like, you know, what did I miss? I keep wondering. You know, keep thinking about it. I've been having nightmares <laughs> about that cat, actually. That dumb doll. Um, anyways, it'd be great to hear from you. I miss you, man. Maybe we could go to that arcade like we talked about. Or not. We could also just talk. You know. Give me a call. Later.
I will now eat the first donut of Just subject number 216990 doesn't seem dangerous on the surface. To the outside observer, it is nothing but a goofy doll. But that is not the case. 216990, or as we tend to call it, the doll, was found at the site of a grisly murder. Multiple stab wounds, blood everywhere. It was rough. Nobody suspected the doll initially. Obviously. When it started exhibiting strange behavior in its lockup, however, that's when we were called in by high ups familiar with the situation. We are Reynolds' unidentified research, of course, and the doll was certainly unidentified. When we first began observation of the doll, nothing seemed incredibly out of the ordinary. We almost would have been comfortable bringing it home to our own children. Almost. I'm sure none of you are surprised by the fact that I adore absolutely everything about our favorite lasagna loving cat, Garfield. Eventually, we began to notice it moving ever so slightly on its own. Nothing extreme, but enough to know something was off. Some employees started thinking they heard mumbling from the camera feed. Some even said they heard screaming when nobody else was around it. It was... concerning, to say the least. That was around when we hired a couple of new people. One of them seemed almost transfixed with the dog, right from the beginning. He wasn't very familiar with the case, and hadn't seen our recorded findings yet. But the way the doll seemed to connect with him... I had an idea. I instructed everyone else to keep the truth from this newbie. I wanted him to watch the doll on his own after hours. I wanted to see what would happen. Nurture that connection without his knowledge. Was it unethical? Maybe. But sometimes you need to sacrifice ethics for the sake of scientific study. So what happened next? The rookie scientist, Mr. McJenkins, began to exhibit increasingly unstable behavior every week. Hi, I'm Marty McJenkins, and I approve this commercial. Eat lasagna, yum yum. Lasagna is great. The doll began communicating with him. Was this verbally or mentally? We were never completely sure. There were times when it seemed like it was all in McJenkins' head. We didn't usually hear anything on the recorded footage, 
But of course, there were the others who reported hearing sounds coming from the feed, so we couldn't rule out the doll's ability to speak. I think it could do both, speak up loud and in the mind when it starts to attach itself to you. Hey, this is Plantly, leave a message. Hey man, um, I still haven't heard back from you, so... I thought I'd just call you this way. I think that's what the doll is. I just had a couple of questions about the Garfield videos. I know, I know, I should get over it, but I'm, I'm just trying to fill in a few of the missing pieces of your story, if I'm able. A leech, a parasite. I know you said April Fools at the end of the video. Uh, was it really a joke? Like, was it really all a joke? It gets its roots inside a victim and forces its will upon the mind and psyche. That part afterwards seemed a little... I don't know. Uh... Call me back. But I'm getting ahead of myself. If Jenkins would come to me and tell me about the doll speaking, the things it would say, the doll told him he was special, then another time that nobody else understood the doll like Nick Jenkins did. But also, I'll hurt you. I'll hurt your family. I'll never leave you alone. It was rather disturbing stuff, but the doll was in lockdown at our facility. I don't believe it could do anything of the sort at the time. The Reynolds Unidentified Research Facility is a state-of-the-art underground structure built with the sole purpose of research and experimentation on any unidentified forms of matter. We pride ourselves on updating our facilities to meet the research standards of the 21st century. Research. Jenkins insisted he needed to log the things the doll said in the reports. So, I told him no. That was ridiculous. Stop being crazy. It was a doll. It can't speak. Ultimately, I think it was a mistake. I logged what he told me myself in secret. But he only spiraled from there. The doll took more ground in his mind, more control. Eventually, McJenkins stopped telling me what the doll said, but I later found it hidden in his own secret log that he had hid on our website.
woods leave a VHS tape in the woods? Who would leave a VHS tape of the woods? From what we understand, the doll began to appeal to him. If you set me free, I'll leave you alone. Break me out and I won't hurt you or your family. Release me, and you'll never have to see me again. Things of that nature. He told me that I was special. He said no one understood him like me. He told me that all I had to do was release him into the world. He said he would let me and my family live if I took him away and released him into the woods. He wouldn't stop talking. Nobody believed me. They thought I was insane. I tried to log what the doll spoke to me, but they claimed it was nonsense. So I did what the doll asked. I took him. I ran. I took him to the woods. I found a bench. He said to leave him there. He said that I would never have to see him again. But I see him every night. Every night I go to sleep, I have nightmares about him. I can't get him out of my brain. If this keeps happening, if I can't forget him, I might kill myself. Eventually, McJenkins relented. He couldn't take it anymore. During the shift of another scientist, he broke into the facility. Well, he entered with his keycard, but he wasn't supposed to be there that night. He locked the scientist on duty in the containment area with the doll, and then did the unthinkable. He sat there and watched as the doll tore his co-worker to pieces. When they were dead, he entered the containment area, picked up the doll, and put it in his bag and ran. Alarms sounded, but he was able to get past the guards, because they had no reason to suspect him. He worked there, right? We never saw him or the doll in our facility again. We didn't even understand exactly what had happened until later. Hey, this is Pladley. Leave a message. Hey, man. I really need to talk to you. I think I might... In danger? I've been uh, seeing things. I have questions for you. Call me. Bye. McJenkins set the doll loose on the world by taking him to a wooded area and leaving him on a bench and ran off to live his life. Or so we suppose. We still aren't really sure what happened to him, but we discovered another victim of 216990 shortly after. This individual, Pladley as he goes by online, discovered the doll and took it home. Just like McJenkins, it spoke to him. Slowly but surely, it rooted itself in his mind and his life. The doll forced Pladley to make Garfield-related YouTube videos. Why? We don't know. Frankly, I can think of no greater hell to endure on Earth. It threatened Pladley's family, his life, even his marriage. It drove him to near insanity. Eventually, he couldn't take it anymore. Somehow, he got free. He brought it back to that bench in the woods. That's what we're still trying to understand. Why did the doll let him go? It wasn't finished with him, so why did the doll let him leave it back where he found it? 
We've combed those woods since and haven't found any sign of test subject 216990. Our running theory is that Mr. Pladley made a deal. What? Austin, what did you do? What deal did you make? Why did you take it back to the woods? Why did you set it free again? You could have fought, burned it, thrown it into a wood chipper, buried it alive. You played it off like it was a joke. This whole thing, it was neighbor fools praying. <laughs> but now, it's here for me. It came for me. You let this happen. You. What? deal did you make? When this started out, I thought it was just maybe a couple videos, maybe just make a few and then you would leave me alone. Um, it's pretty obvious now that that's never been the case. Is this why you won't talk to me? Those woods were by my house. What was the deal, Austin? I know I tried to run away. That didn't work. I know you're still upset about that. But, um... I think it's time to finally face the fact that you should leave. What was the deal? Don't torment me anymore. And don't... Please... Don't hurt my wife. Don't hurt my cats. What was the deal?
What? What do you want with me, you stupid, ugly, freaking doll? When it comes to cartoon licenses in gaming throughout the years, many have missed the mark. People tend to laugh and scoff at games like Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, Kingdom Hearts, or Simpsons Hit and Run. And with good reason. Those games are terrible. Those properties are terrible. Today I wanted to look at a game and franchise that has stood the test of time and continues to be adored by millions of fans worldwide. Welcome to the first part of the only series I'll be doing for the foreseeable future. The History of Garfield Games